Welcome to our last lecture on natural disasters and complex humanitarian emergencies. So why is this important? Well, they lead to increased death, illness, and disability. There's large economic impacts and measures can be taken to reduce the cost of disaster and conflict. So let's look at some definitions. So a disaster is any occurrence that causes damage, ecological destruction, loss of human lives, or deterioration of health and health services. But it must be on a scale sufficient to warrant an extraordinary response from outside the affected area. So these are your typical causes of natural disasters. So rapid can be tornado, flood, wildfire, earthquake, typhoon, landslide, tsunami, or slow onset could be drought. And we see that in sub-Saharan Africa, especially due to climate change. So a number of natural disasters are increasing. So we're seeing them more and more and they're affecting large numbers of people. And again, from the impact of climate change. So it's causing more economic losses, but it's causing fewer deaths proportional to the large number of people that are being involved in these natural disasters. 90% of the deaths from these disasters occur in low and middle income countries and it causes damage to health systems and other infra infrastructure that probably wasn't the greatest to begin with. So they're really impacted. Complex humanitarian emergency is a complex multi-party intrastate conflict resulting in a humanitarian disaster which might constitute multidimensional risks or threats to regional and international security. And so, um, you know, one that we always think about is the Syrian crisis. These complex, human, um, complex emergencies often go on for long periods. Sometimes groups that are fighting will not allow humanitarian assistance to be provided. Combatants often target civilians there's systematic abuse of human rights, food shortages, breakdown of publicly supported health systems, and we see unhealthy living circumstances in refugee camps. So who is a refugee? Well, a refugee is a person who is outside his or her country of nationality or habitual residence, has a well-founded fear of persecution because of his or her race, religion, nationality, membership in a particular social group or political opinion, and is unable or unwilling to avail him or herself of the protection of that country or return there for fear of persecution. And so it's someone that's been driven out of their country for these reasons. And refugees are accorded certain rights by international law. Differently though, inter internally displaced people or IDPs are people who are forced to flee or migrate and leave their homes during a disaster or complex humanitarian emergency, but they stay in the country in which they're living. And so the legal definition is not really quite, uh, quite well defined, but the downside is that no agency or organization is responsible for IDPs. So the health burdens of natural disasters, they have direct and indirect effects and it all depends on the disaster. Some effects are short term, such as death rates and others have longer lasting issues such as mental health problems. The very old, the very young and the very sick are the most vulnerable. More than 100,000 people are thought to have died as a result of the earthquake in Haiti in 2010. So you can see the significance of the death toll. Large and underserved, uh, it's large and underestimated because it's difficult to collect the data on the health effects of these emergencies. But we know between 320,000 to 420,000 people are killed each year as a result of these complex humanitarian emergencies. Malnutrition, lack of safe water, food store shortages, and breakdown of health services can lead to illness, disability, and death. So the causes of death in the early stages, most deaths, most deaths occur from diarrheal diseases, respiratory infections, measles or malaria, so from an infectious cause, and populations affected are generally poor and have poor nutritional status to begin with or as a result of the emergency. 
Also, it's a significant rise in violence against women. Security conditions put women at considerable risk of sexual violence. Rape is often used as a weapon of war. And because of economic distress and chaos, it may force women to trade sex for money or food. Mental health is a significant problem, so you can imagine the social and psychological shocks to changes in way of living, loss of livelihood, damaged social networks, and physical and mental harm. Studies have found that affected children and adults suffer from the high rates of depression and PTSD. And for example, if we look at context, the prevalence of PTSD is about 37% among Cambodian refugees versus about 1% in the US. And it's important to help people rebuild their lives and social network networks as quickly as possible. So if you're an individual and you're involved in something like MSF, what do you do in addressing the health effects of natural disasters? So there's a, there's are some priority issues that take place first. First of all, you would go in and assess the health situation immediately. So let's say, for instance, there's a tsunami. So addressing the health situation immediately, you address the needs of the immediate trauma cases. You help other injured people who are in need of early care and treatment. You establish a continuous disease surveillance and you start to provide food, water and shelter. So just think of the bottom of Maslow's hierarchy. And so if we're looking at external assistance coming in, it's really, really important that there's cooperative relationship among the partners, both individuals on the ground living in that country and external partners coming in. It's really important for partners to work in ways that are complementary to each other. You need to be evidence-based and transparent and you need to involve the affected communities. We all, to, all need to walk, work collaboratively together. It's important to prepare a disaster preparedness plans, and they can be, in, in, be formed through identifying vulnerabilities, developing scenarios of what might happen and the likelihood, outline the role that different actors will play in the event of emergency, and train first responders and managers to deal with such emergencies. So this is something that can be done in areas that you know could have an impact of natural disasters or if you end up in an area that's maybe had a natural disaster and you're planning to make sure that could, an, could a something else happen that we need to plan for. So when you're addressing the health effects of the complex humanitarian emergencies, assessment and surveillance is the first thing you need to be carried out. So you're carrying out assessment of a displaced population establish a system for disease surveillance, check the weight and height for all under five children, and assess the daily crude mortality rate. And so you're looking at the proportion of people who die in a population at risk over a specified period of time. And it's, it's expressed in per 10,000 populations. So you wanna get an idea of the crude mortality rate you want to try and protect the children as much as possible. So you're checking for children who are malnourished, stunting. And so you can try and help them um, as soon as possible. A health and safety environment. So you're looking at WASH. You're trying to maintain environmental and personal hygiene, making sure there's adequate clean water, adequate number of toilets that are segregated by sex, provide effective and culturally appropriate shelter. And then looking at food, providing at least 21,000 kilocalories of energy per day for adults, ensuring that female headed households and children get their rations, give vitamin A to all children, and provide urgent nutrition, tr nutritional supplementation to severely malnourished children. So again, these are all the things that would happen if you're involved in an organization that is coming into an area that's been involved in a complex humanitarian emergency. And then disease control. It's important to handle injuries and trauma first. It's important if possible to make sure all children are vaccinated, age six months to 15 years old, 
properly manage diarrhea and malaria, provide health education and promote hygiene, provide minimal package of care for a pregnant women to make sure that they're getting the basic care that they need, and attend to those urgent psychiatric conditions. And so this, this, this is where you're looking at having all these individuals maybe in a refugee camp and looking at these, this, these individuals could be in this refugee camp for a significant amount of time. And so someone will be coordinating the international emergency response, and that will be a UN body called the Office of Humanitarian Affairs. And they are involved in coordinating um, the response from the UN. And NGOs are aware of the common standards and the guiding principles for humanitarian action. So the main messages are that natural disasters such as droughts, famines, hurricanes, typhoons, heavy rains have important health impacts. More than 90% of the deaths from these natural disasters occur in low and middle income countries. Some of the effects are short term such as death and other effects are more long term such as mental health impacts. Complex humanitarian emergencies have direct and indirect impacts on health and the countries at risk can take a number of measures to mitigate the vulnerability to damage from natural disasters. So this pre-preparing, so building seawalls and levees, uh, requiring earthquake proofing, strengthening water supply infrastructures. So if you're living in a community that could be at risk, it's like that disaster planning. Whoops. And then, if you're involved in providing um, crisis um, support during a humanitarian emergency, health during, the, during these crises needs to be assessed quickly and continuously. Early, early attention to the environment, shelter, water, and food when dealing with displaced peoples, and particular attention must be paid to malnutrition, pneumonia, and malaria, and other infectious diseases.